Now, when you take these, first you want to break it down and just learn them on, um, let's say, like a for lack of a practice pad. You know, you can get a pillow, get yourself a um, a chair, practice pad, and you can start working on them. You, you learn them, right? And you, and you, as well as doing them, learn them slow, and then you can increase them. That's going to help your technique, your hands, you know, and that way you build up your chops. And when you're playing on something like this, it's not a lot of bounce anyway, so your hands definitely get to exercise and have to do some work. Same thing with, a, you know, when you're playing on a pillow. Make sense? Okay, so... Work on getting those five that you're going to learn for the week. And I would say probably after a couple of days, two or three days, you should be able to start to commit them to memory. Right? And once that happens, what I would suggest you do then is try to sit down and, and, and play with them over the drums. And to do that several ways, I would say one way of doing it is just, just start playing the drums. Whatever you want to play and see how you can incorporate the rudiments. Everybody have that? I would suggest if you can, you know, you know, write it down. We'll play some full four and, and, and play the room. So you just. How many of you are familiar with Philly Joe Jones? So, you listen to Philly Joe Jones and, and then you go through that Wilcoxon book and he's talking about the same Wilcoxon book that I mentioned to you earlier. You hear a lot of the same things, you know, plays. It's, it's good examples of it. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. But do some research on your own and, and try to go through uh, all of these guys. And I mean, every and, and, and the beauty of this is, is all these guys up here have different styles. You know, and pretty much you can, you know, when you when you hear them, you know it's who they are. I mean, you know, it's, distinct, it's distinctive. That, ma that makes sense to everybody. And especially uh, for the younger guys, it's important to have the history. And that's, it's just not, it's gonna, just gonna help propel you. Because you know where things came from, you kind of see where they're going, what you do. And any time your band director brings in a chart, go find different versions of it and listen to it. Listen to different guys playing it. And that's going to help you because it's going to be hard to play anything that you don't listen to and you, that you don't spend time with. Put one to like a piano classical piece or something. Well, I mean... The, 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 yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, the closest thing I could probably tell you to that might be some of Jack's, Jack's things. I know Jack is probably predominantly a piano player. Okay. And um. Well, a lot of his pieces would probably fall like that. If you go Who's check that, that out. Again? Jack DeJanet. Oh, okay. Which is, uh, we got him up here somewhere. So you can probably Google and check some of his stuff out because he's a very, you know, very, plays piano very, very well. And uh, a few of the guys have, have played piano well. Victor Lewis is another one that comes to mind. 
off the top of my head. Um, how would you think that would change, like how you would approach the drums? I've always wondered. I've tried to imagine. I don't know if it changes. I don't know. I can't necessarily say if, if it changes something. It's good to have uh, the knowledge because I think all of the great drummers play musically. At least all of my favorite guys play musically. Not necessarily they play piano, but they play musically. Yeah, yeah. Because they were hearing, uh, they were still hearing melodies. Right. You know, like you, anytime you listen to Max Roach, and I'm sure Max Roach must have played some great piano, but Max Roach is, you know, all, everybody here familiar with Max yeah. Roach? And I suggest if you haven't, Google and check out some of his solos, but all his solos are very much. Matter of fact, uh, anybody that heard the concert last night, Usually when I start out, I pay homage you know, to my guys. The first thing I played was all Max Roach, and that's, that was from his solo, uh, Big Sid. That's all Max, you know what I mean? And um, so, but Max was very melodic, and even because that was that was my introduction to jazz was Max. One of the first records I had was Clifford Brown and, and Max Roach. That. Um, I think the record had Parisian thoroughfare and all that stuff on it. But just hearing the way he soloed and, and, and playing all the melodies and stuff, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. So, but most of, but did you come to find that most of those, those drummers had their own way of playing melodic? And they all, and this is the key to, too, to playing drums, they all sing melody. Right. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, if you get some of those records, it went, well, like of uh, Art Blakey, Elvin, and or Billy Higgins, because they all had a way when they playing. You know, like if you had a chance to see them and sit by the drums, you'd hear them. You know, you say, "What is that?" But they're saying the melody. You know what I mean? And I was very good friends with Higgins. That was my man. You know, but they all play very, very melodic. So, and the more you play the music, that comes because you, you know, and that's why I say it's important too to learn songs. You know, you go to a jam session, song gets called, go home and learn. So are the drums related to certain pitches? Like they can be, but but not but you know, and there's some guys that can play the drums and get different pitches out of them. But but you can still give the um, the um, the idea of, of what the melody of what the melody is, which was an exercise I usually take all the drummers through. And I'm not sure we have enough time to do it today, but use that. So when we t when we talking about song form, I ask guys about playing blues. I always ask the guys, you know. Well, let's play a blues and then have you solo across it. And um, uh, one of the song, songs I tell them that you pick a blues that you can sing, it's easy to you. One that I've always found easy is one of uh, Charlie Parker's uh, themes. Uh, now's the time. Any of you know Now's the Time? All right, well, y'all gonna sing it. Ready? Everybody ready? One, two, one, uh, uh. <laughs> song at home and I suggest you know take advantage of it. take some blues anything you learn you go to a jam session a song is called you don't learn go find a recording learn the melody then come home and work with it like that and uh, you should be able to do that with, with all the songs that you play um, another good song I usually get guys through because the form is a little just a little different is uh, all the things you are anybody familiar with all things you are
you are really the conductor. That makes sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Without, you know, sounding uh, conceited or anything, but that was the way all those guys taught me. Higgins and Max, they, they all taught me, you know, when you up here, you on the throne. Because <laughs> when, when we look at the, and that's why I said, when you guys study the history of it, all bands are usually as good as their drummers. Right. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> just the way it is. I mean, it's important. And I mean, and I think most band leaders will tell you that. They look for the, the best drummer they can find. It's gonna, it's just like a team finding a quarterback, you know. Usually they're gonna try to find that perfect fit or match because that's gonna be the driving force to the team. That's the same thing the drums are. If we can go through any band in history, and I don't care what genre of music, and usually, if that band is, is, is really a great band, it's gonna be a, a great drummer in it, right? And especially when we when we discuss jazz and we talk about all the innovators, we talk about Louis Armstrong. What names come to mind in terms of drummers? Huh? Well, one of the first names that should come to mind is this here, Baby Dodge. He's one of the first drummers, you know, with, with, with Louis Armstrong, right? And then, you know, we talk about Count Basie. What, what drummers come to mind? Yeah. So, you know, Papa Joe Jones, he had, he had a slew of uh, great drums. Um, uh, yeah, Papa Joe. Uh, Sonny Payne. Huh? Sonny Payne. Sonny Payne, right. That's what I was thinking. Sonny Payne. So, Duke Ellington, you know, you know, all the great drums that go along do that. But if I say Miles Davis, what drummers come to mind? Johnny Williams. Hmm? Johnny Williams. Tony Williams is one. Anybody Billy else? Joe. Billy Joe Jones. Jimmy Cobb. Jimmy Cobb. Huh? Jack. Right? Al Foster. Al Foster, right? All those names come to mind. And that's just what it is. So all you think of the period of miles and all the Charlie Parker, what names come to mind? Roy Haynes. Anybody else? Buddy Rich, you know, all the guys that played with Charlie Parker. So when I talk about the innovators, what, what my point I'm trying to make to you, when we start talking about innovators or, or good bands, you see strong drummers appear, right? If I say John Coltrane was large impact music, what, what comes to mind? Elvin. Elvin, Elvin. Elvin Jones, right? Arthur right? Uh, Arthur Taylor. If we mention, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the, the one of my, another one of my favorite bands, the Cannonball Adley group, what name comes to mind? Lewis Hayes, right? Now we talk about Oscar Peterson. What comes to mind? Ed Thigpen. So you you you, you see my you see where I'm going with my point is? So the drums, this chair is very very important. So the drums, knowing the music, understanding what you're playing, so you can help you know direct traffic. It's almost like you know drums, you know, like a conductor, a crossing guard. You know, you stop traffic here, not yet. Now you come, you know. That's what the drums has all of that ability.